So lots of calendar applications have been coming out over the last couple of months and many still to come out. But today, Rise Calendar is coming out and we're going to do a little bit of an overview as we've been able to test it before it's come out. Welcome everyone, my name is Francesco. I'm excited to dive into this Rise Calendar review because we've been playing for it for a few weeks now and other applications, calendar applications. And I think calendar apps are always very interesting, close to my heart, as someone who really liked Sunrise back in the day, but it was acquired by Microsoft, some very sad news. But Rise Calendar has interested me ever since their announcement of funding, mainly because there's been one backer behind it, Stuart Butterfield, that I quite respect, and it's interesting to see how the team have been building this application in the background. So Rise Calendar is very simple in nature, and it allows Google Calendar, and it has plans to add more in the future. But it is available primarily through desktop right now, and I do think they have plans for mobile experiences as well. But as a whole, Rise Calendar wants to be the place where you better focus your time. And they do that for a few, few unique features which we were able to test and really give you a feedback on. Now, the first of those is one called Focus Guard, and it's basically like time blocking, but utilizing more of an automated system. So you basically set when you wanted some focus time in your calendar. For example, in my case, it might be in the morning and it might be a certain amount per week, like 16 hours. And what it will do is it automatically find that time when your week becomes too busy with meetings. So I actually didn't have anything planned this week and then next week, I had a couple of meetings and suddenly it started finding that time. Now what's really nice is it actually blocks that as busy so people won't interrupt that time and it will try to book meetings around that as well. There's other features when it comes to this, like for example, lunchtime, being able to book that in as a routine habit, which means that it won't be disturbing your time. There's a couple of other features inside of this, like the ability to change your calendar type uh, event type, which is quite an interesting approach. So there's three event types. There's all day, normal, and flexible, which is basically adaptive to the more events you add. And it will try to really sort things out based on the priority of the item, which is nice, or the event that's coming in. So flexible means you can actually change it to a flexible time window to find a better slot that might be coming up. So aside from this, they're also doing some other elements when it comes to booking meetings with other people in internally and externally. They have a great scheduler that allows you to book meetings externally and also will help you to plot them on your calendar and be able to share them to other people. This is really nice because it works similar to Calendly, but there's an internal function as well. And you can add up to five team members on the free plan. I'll come to the pricing a little bit later. But the idea is, say I wanted to book a meeting with Charlotte, for example, I can find some suggested times using the same concept of trying to keep away from focused times and keeping slots of time open for focus time in the future. So this function really works in the background to try and coordinate your calendar more effectively. And the idea of this application is they want you to be in more control. So in terms of settings, performance, functionality, the settings is quite advanced in terms of what you can do with it, setting up rules, working hours, and other aspects of your calendar that you might not meet the eye. And I quite like the optionality when it comes to ordering number of days and views. The application itself is really fast and snappy and the performance was on par to the likes of Vimcal, which they tout as the fastest calendar application. I would say that it's both on par in terms of speed and performance. So the abilities you get in the free plan are all of the main features. It's quite an interesting free plan because it's really strange in a way. It's much more targeted towards teams. So you can get up to five team members for free with all of the features or and you can upgrade to the premium, which gives you access to unlimited team members, but you're gonna to have to pay 20 euros per month per team member that is naturally on your account. So again, it's much more suited for teams that are looking to grow, that are looking to book meetings and protect their time more so that they actually have um, some protection of that time. And they also have neat features in this like team analytics, which will help you to get a breakdown of where your team's spending your time effectively. And that's much better as a holistic view and approach. Now, as a whole, this application is very expensive, but it's much more designed for teams. 
On the free plan, it's really decent. Only available on desktop at the moment. Gives some limitations, but that's not bad. If you wanted to get more of an aspect on this, you can jump over to Tool Finder to find our review on it. We've written that out, but you can also read our deep dive, which will be linked below, which is a 10 minute video overviewing everything you need to know about Rise Calendar. So all in all, I'm impressed by this application. It's really well designed and you can tell that they're paying real close attention to detail. They've built some features, they're a very focused mindset, and I'm excited to see where this expands to in the future as Rise Calendar continue to grow. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this review. As I said, if you're in the hunt for calendar applications and this one didn't meet the bill, that's totally fine. You can jump over on Tool Finder to find the best one for you. So thank you very much and I'll see you again in a future video, I'm sure. Cheerio folks.